Hey guys, as always, Amy here, answering the questions you didn't even know you had about space. Like, has anyone ever tried a wooden heat shield? Yes, yes, China has used wooden heat shields with amazing success. We're looking at that today on Vintage Space. I've seen this question pop up a few times and people ask me about it from time to time because they assume that it's a myth, that there's no way a wooden heat shield could possibly protect anything returning from space. Well, it has. The program we're looking at for this one is the FSW series of satellites. This was a simple reconnaissance satellite system that could be used for both military and civilian missions. And it was started in the mid-1960s before China had put anything into orbit. Though the program began in 1964, it didn't see successful orbital missions until the mid-1970s. But then once it started flying, the system did have a lot of success. And one of the most interesting things about it was its use of a wooden heat shield. Heat shields are vital when you're returning from space. That's because regardless of the shape of the vehicle, as it falls back through the atmosphere, friction from the particles that make up that atmosphere will heat up the body of the spacecraft. Without some kind of protection from that heat, whatever's inside the spacecraft, be it a film canister or a human, will be exposed to unsurvivable temperatures. One of the more common solutions to the re-entry heating problem is an ablative heat shield, a heat shield that is made of a material that burns away as it heats. Re-entry heat is dissipated as it burns away the material that makes up the heat shield, saving the spacecraft's occupant or cargo from the heat of re-entry. There are different kinds of ablative heat shields, but one you don't hear about too often is wood. And in the case of China's FSW satellites, white oak wood to be specific. Now, it sounds completely insane because typically when you think of wood and heat, you think of fire. Wood, we know, burns very easily. So how can it possibly be used as a heat shield? Oak, it turns out, burns very slowly and does not transfer heat very easily. A thick piece of white oak is actually a really good insulator and a really good ablative material. White oak burns very slowly and does not transfer heat very quickly. A wooden heat shield during re-entry burns and chars into charcoal. That layer of charcoal then falls away as the spacecraft enters the atmosphere, and a new layer of wood is burned and charred into charcoal. This process repeats as the wood burns away, but very little of the heat is actually transferred through the wooden heat shield. This process of burning and charring and stripping away that charcoal meant that the heat shield and the nose cone would get thinner, but ultimately, not much of the heat heat would be transferred to the metal of the spacecraft, therefore sparing it the heat of re-entry. So this is admittedly a very odd one, but I hope this kind of clears up any questions you guys had about seeing this myth, quote unquote, of a wooden heat shield floating around the internet. If you still have questions, let me know. And I've got a little bit more on the FSW series of satellites in the blog post linked below, so check that out if you'd like a little bit more information. As always, let me know what topics you would like to see covered in future episodes in the comment section below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily adventure space content. And with new videos going up every single week, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.